Now this next question came in from my dad actually, but he didn't write this email. This is something he got the other day. Uh, this was an extortion attempt that came into his email. It was addressed to his email address and they had one of the passwords he used to use on websites in the subject line. And what they're threatening him here is to uh, release uh, some webcam video of him doing whatever. Uh, and if they don't get $8,000 in Bitcoins in the next 36 hours, they're going to start sending it to all of his contacts out there. Uh, now, clearly this is something that he realized was a fake right out of the gate here because he's never done what they said he did. Um, but this is what's going around. And where did they get that password from? Well, a couple of years ago, a number of websites got hacked and usernames and password combinations got out into the wild. They've been circulating in these databases out on the dark web. Uh, two of the main sources of these are uh, LinkedIn and Adobe. Uh, both of these sites got hit pretty hard and hackers walked away with the username and password combos for a lot of people. And the concern here is that once they get that email address and that password, uh, they can start trying it out on other websites to see if maybe they can get access to your banking information or other things, which makes it really important that you don't have the same password used for more than one website because if somebody compromises one of these sites, they get your username and password combo uh, and then they can start getting into other stuff as well or you'll get emails like this. Now this information's out there, people are getting at it and they're trying all sorts of different ways to either extort money from people or access their private and personal information directly, which of course is a concern. Now, I use something called LastPass, which is a pretty decent and robust password manager. It's been getting better and better over the years. Uh, what I use it for is to generate a secure password uh, individually for every website that I visit. In fact, I don't know what any of my passwords are at all. LastPass knows what they are and LastPass is secured by a master password, which is <laughs> probably a point of weakness, but there's a master password that uh, LastPass uses to unlock everything and then begins unlocking other websites. And they now have an app uh, for the iOS platform that's been out for a while, but now it connects up with iOS 12. So if I'm in an app, I can access the passwords through uh, LastPass directly, which has been a big help. Apple also has a built-in password manager now too that works on the Mac via Safari or on your iOS device. There's other ones out there too, but LastPass is the one that I settled on. I think it's like $2 a month if you pay for an annual subscription, and I think that's probably a good price to pay for some peace of mind. Uh, the way LastPass works is that it does sync up your passwords in the clouds so that all your devices can get at it but it's a pre-internet encryption for that password blob. So if somebody were to hack the uh, LastPass servers, unless they know your password, they're not going to be able to get at uh, the information inside of your password file, which really makes having a secure password really important. I also backed mine up with two-factor authentication. So if somebody did get the password, uh, they still need to have my authenticator app to get at it. So there are some safeguards I've put into place, but nonetheless, you still have to keep that master password secure. And that leads me to this question as to whether or not uh, passwords are even viable anymore as a security mechanism because they are as old as computers themselves are. And I thought it was pretty cool back in the 80s when I was logging into BBSs with a username and password just like the War Games movie, but of course times change. And there's some new uh, ideas kind of circulating out there to uh, go beyond passwords and make it easier for people to log in, but also make it more secure. Uh, one of those is something that Steve Gibson from the Security Now podcast has been working on called Secure Quick Reliable Login or Squirrel. And it involves using a uh, little QR code on a website with an app that you uh, scan it with and you're able to log into a website without them ever getting any of your authentication information. So when you think about this recent Facebook thing where somebody could get your login credential and then log into any other website that you had initially registered through Facebook, uh, that attack would not work here because you are authenticating locally. And the system takes some explanation to understand exactly how it works, but there's a good website that I've got linked up on screen right now that I think provides the best explanation for it. Uh, so basically it creates a single master key that's the basis for all of these squirrel enabled websites that you're logging into. Uh, that key is never shared. It's a private key that you keep on your computer, but it utilizes unique site specific digital signatures to prove your identity. So there's a public key that gets created from that master private key. 
And they also have something called identity lock so that if that uh, master key was ever exposed, you could immediately de-authenticate across all these other websites. The problem though, at least as I read it, is that you still need to have something that you hang on to locally, whether you print it out or store it on a computer. Because if you lose that initial credential, uh, you're kind of out of luck in proving who you are later. So that's the one issue that I see with this. That you have to have something retained uh, in order for this system to work in the case that you have to regenerate your identity. But beyond that, I think it might be a good alternative if they can figure out some way to make it a little bit easier for consumers to recover themselves if they happen to lose the master key file or the authentication method for regenerating that master key. But there are some benefits here in the sense that you don't have a username or password anymore. So if somebody were to break into uh, LinkedIn again, uh, they would just have the credential to get you logged into LinkedIn and nowhere else. And I think it actually might be difficult for them even to log into LinkedIn again. Uh, there's no keyboard interaction, so you do have the ability to uh, avoid getting your keystrokes logged when you are putting in that username and password combination. You only need to keep your master key safe. There's no list of usernames or passwords to keep track of, so it kind of eliminates the need for a password manager because if that key is safe, every time you log into a website, it authenticates based on that and you're back in again. Uh, and there's also no way to link one person across sites based only on the site-specific public key. So in other words, you don't have that issue we had with Facebook. Uh, websites may ask for more information that could be tracked, of course, later, but this doesn't create a cookie issue where if you're logged into Facebook with that authentication token, they can't see what you're doing on some other site that uh, uses that access token in some way. So there's some privacy issues this addresses, but I think it also is a lot simpler from uh, a standpoint of usernames and passwords because to tell my parents, hey folks, uh, you need to have a separate password and username for everything, uh, they can't deal with it. It's just too much to remember. My mother keeps a pad of everything that she's writing down in and it's just a mess right now. They forget their passwords all the time. I'm constantly having to help them restore their passwords. It just doesn't work. Uh, something like this, if they can at least make that issue of losing the master key a little bit easier, uh, might be the way to go. Uh, Squirrel is not officially out and released just yet, but they do have some ways you can play with it uh, on the GRC website that I'll have linked down below in the video description. So if you're eager to try it out and look at a different way of authentication, uh, check it out because I think it might be uh, one of the solutions we have to passwords in the future because clearly usernames and passwords here are really a big security problem and are no longer effective in my opinion. And in my Q&A for you this week, I'm curious if you got any of those extortion emails in your inbox. You might have to check your spam folder. That's where mine showed up, but I'm just curious to see uh, how many people got because I've got a lot of them over the last couple of days and I can see why people might be concerned over that, especially if they have a guilty conscience. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.